Rayan Rupair played for the New Zealand Breakers in the NBL. He is he's not even 19. He'll be 19 really soon. He's a 6'6 wing, as so many players are. He's been mocked most times in the 20s. I've seen him as high as 16 in drafts. His shooting numbers are bad. 31% from three down here. 48% true shooting. 37% overall. One and a half steals per 36 is nice. 20 usage is okay. There are a lot of players that come down to Australia and struggle with their shooting. Usman Jeng was horrible last season. Lamelo Ball shot 25% from three shooting down here playing for Illawarra. It's not uncommon for 18-year-olds to really struggle with their shot. Josh Giddy obviously struggled with his shot down here, but you know, he's improved over the two seasons in the NBA. So, Repair is a French player, obviously playing down in the Australian league. New Zealand had yeah, two French guys last season in Jeng and Hugo Besson as well. So I guess there's some sort of yeah, French to New Zealand pathway potentially going on I'll there. The same, I, was about, I was about to say, two of, the, two of the three guys have the same agent, but there is a French connection there. Interesting. So they're all, New Zealand's got a bunch of NBA players in their ownership group, I think. I think, is it Sean Marion that's in that one? There's a bunch of them. I can't remember. Uh, um, Matt Walsh that used to play at the University of Florida. Okay. I think I think he's in in the ownership group. But yes, there 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 is a, a connection there. Yeah. Sure. So repairs down here. Like he played. Yeah. Look, that's they're okay numbers as an 18 year old in a professional league. You have. Yeah. You know, we've seen a few players coming out of Australia. So you look at those numbers. They look bad. But is that a level of concern for you that shooting, or are you just like, well, you know, you were able to get some minutes on the court in this league. Who is they're not there solely to develop you. Um, and, and getting some playing time is encouraging, I think. Yeah, and, and Ryan is, is training and working out here in Dallas. I've had a chance to be around him often. I've probably been to maybe 20 of his workouts. He's working out twice a day. I've done some video stuff with him. So I probably have a little bit more insight than, than the average person. But the to put things into context is he did miss two months of the season with a broken is either broken hand or broken wrist. Yep. So I think that has an impact on his shooting. And he told me it didn't. I don't want to call him a liar, but he, he didn't want to make any excuses, in, in my opinion. But I, I don't care who you are. If you miss that much time with a you know, broken wrist or hand or whatever, I think it is going to have an impact on your shooting. But you know, props to him for not looking to use it as an excuse. I think most people would have. And something that he mentioned to me was – even though he was, you know, he's, he's been boxed in or labeled as this 3 and D defender, he was saying that that's not a role that he's ever played. But in Australia, it's his first year playing professional basketball. He was on a good team. I think they went to the finals, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's true, yep. Yeah, they went to the finals. So he had some, some, some good players around him. So he, in order for him to, I guess, get on the court, he had to settle into this role as the 3 and D guy. But he wasn't known as a three-point shooter coming in. And, and he, um, you know, obviously he struggled with, with shooting. And he told me he was more so of like a, a, a point guard or played some two and when he was back in France. So this was a totally different role for him. And not only was it just a, a different role, it was a different country. We're talking about an 18-year-old that was in a new country all by himself. He didn't know the language. And I thought, considering all those factors, um, I, I thought he, he played pretty well. But the, the skill set that he has or, or what he's going to hang his hat on is his defensive versatility. He was crazy long wingspan. I think he measured out like seven two and a half or seven three wingspan wingspan. And I think right now teams are going to our teams are interested in him because of his defensive versatility and upside, and they'll figure out the offense later on. I'm just looking at the roster for New Zealand. So there was uh, Jarrell Brantley, who played a little bit with the Jazz, um, was on that team. And uh, William McDowell-White, who probably should have had a crack at some point in the NBA and might actually end up going over there. I think it's a pretty... Uh, he might have... He, I think he won some sort of award over here. But he might have even been in the discussion close to the MVP. But William McDowell-White, um, who's about 20 or 21 as well, who played uh, over in the US, probably at St. Mary's. If he's an Australian player in college, he probably played in St. Mary's. I can't remember exactly where he played <laughs> in college, but yeah. he was uh, he was over there. Um, so that was a relatively strong team, as I said. Went to the NBA. <laughs> 